Black History Month has me thinking about culture and specifically black culture. When I Google the term, it's defined as a noun, culture, the arts and other manifestations of human intellectual achievement regarded collectively. Definition two, culture, the customs, arts, social institutions, and achievements of a particular nation, people, or other social group. So with that said, I'm thinking about culture. I'm thinking about what was I taught about culture as a young black British youth growing up with a Caribbean heritage. What was acceptable or not acceptable within the culture and how was that taught to me? So with that in mind, I'm calling this video, Don't Bring No Rasta in This House. I was raised by the Windrush generation. And if you have a similar background as me, being first generation black British with Caribbean heritage, then that term, that phrase should not be strange to you. It was something you heard your Caribbean parents say. It was a warning. Don't bring no rasta in this house. But why? Why would our parents, our Caribbean parents, warn us about bringing rasta to their house? I'm thinking that it had something to do with them coming up in Jamaican society, where they, as young people, as young adults, would have been exposed to the negative stereotypes that were held about Rastafari at that time. Back then in Jamaican society, Rastafari meant that you were unkempt, you were dirty, especially with the visibility of the locksing of the hair. They were associated with being criminals. They were associated with smoking ganja even though herb was a common uh, plant to be found all throughout Jamaica. They were associated with being rebels. And it's true, Rastafari was and is rebellious. But to our Windrush generation parents, it was rebellious in that it went against everything that they believed about the great British Empire. It questioned colonialism. It asked a question, why did Jamaicans have to look at life through British history, where they were the ones enslaved and they were the ones oppressed? And that's something that our Windrush parents were not willing to deal with. So for them, they raise us up with this warning about not bringing Rasta to their house. It was based upon their fear and also based upon their colonial conditioning that did not allow them to accept anything positive about the Rastafari culture. So what is Rastafari? It's a social and ideological movement that evolved in Jamaica in the 1930s. It came from a maroon tradition of fighting against a slave system that existed in Jamaica back in the days. Rastafari is a way of life. And also it's an authentic Jamaican cultural expression that came from the maroon tradition. Rastafari is a movement 
that links Jamaica to its African roots. It embraces music, language, spirituality, art, health, politics, or as the Russians would say, politics. It promotes humanity, love, one love. And it raises a consciousness about African history. You may know it in different ways. And I think the most um, popular way of expressing Rastafari has come through the music, reggae music, and specifically roots reggae. So why then, as I think about culture, why would our Windrush generation parents, some of them, warn us, don't bring no Rasta in this house? Think about it. I mean, they warned us. They warned us as first generation black British youth. But did we listen? No. Many of us didn't. Many of us embraced Rastafari as youth because for us, as black British youth with Caribbean heritage, we looked at Rastafari in a very different way. For us, Rastafari informed us about life in the Caribbean. And for most of us who were born and raised in England, uh, we didn't get to go to the Caribbean very often, if at all, as young people. Rastafari grounded us in a Caribbean culture that a lot, a lot of us did not get to experience. What it actually did, it helped us to create a way of thinking that made the music that we listened to, the food that we ate, and the language that we heard at home, and in my case, it would have been, you know, Jamaican Patois. It made all of that make a bit more sense growing up in England. Rastafari also were rebellious. So as youth, we were naturally rebellious. But it wasn't just the rebellion. It wasn't a rebel without a cause. We, we were rebellious as youth in society because first and foremost it was an effort to be accepted as British. We were black and we were British and we struggled against being identified and being accepted as black British. We were rebellious based upon racism and Rastafari you know helped us understand that and make sense of it if you like me grew up in England in the 80s and 90s you know about the NF the National Front and you know how that was you know almost like being terrorized in the streets you know you have a group of people that were part of the NF didn't like you you can get knocked down boxed around sworn at spat at so we were rebellious against you know that type of um, injustice we were rebellious against the sus laws sus laws that existed from the 80s up until now search under suspicion where the police would could stop you mainly young black males but they could stop your friends stop your family members if you were going somewhere hanging out somewhere and they felt that you were doing something that was illegal they could just stop you under the sus laws and search you and actually you know take you off to um the police station so like rastafari yeah we were rebellious we were rebellious against the lack of jobs and opportunities you remember England in the 70s and the 80s, the Thatcher time. And also we were rebellious generally because 
there were social changes taking place all over the world and especially in the Caribbean and Africa and Rastafari helped us understand that and pay attention to what was going on and help us helped us to see the world in a bigger context than just our neighborhoods so as i'm here thinking about culture and um, specifically black caribbean culture and how i was raised to embrace it or in some cases not embrace it i think about the idea of my mum saying don't bring no rasta in this house and I think about us as young people we used to walk around the streets and um, wear our red gold and green tams we used to go to dances and mainly listen to reggae roots music and be so influenced by the music we would embrace our parents Caribbean culture and um, maybe not understand it fully being born and raised in England, but know that Rastafari helped us to ground ourselves in a culture that was more than just English life and helped us to find a way of expressing ourselves as young people in a society that for the most part had a hard time accepting us. I'm fast forwarding today and thinking about culture and what it means for the young generation now. What does it mean for the young Afro-Caribbean youth in England now? What does, it, what does it mean for young people around the world, especially those who do have Caribbean heritage? How do we explain culture to them? What do we warn them against when it comes to embracing our own culture. I look at the role of Rastafari now, especially in relation to the kind of society that young people are growing up in now. Rastafari is an authentic form of cultural expression. How does it help us now? So in hindsight, as I'm here thinking about culture, let's fast forward to today's times, 2019. Let's look at the culture in relation to how it guides us as a group of people, how it guides our youth. We're still plagued by violence in our communities. We're still filling the prisons. We're still not doing well in school. We're still, we still do not have political or economic strongholds in the society. So as, a, as an authentic form of cultural expression, you know, what can Rastafari give us? What has it given us? that we haven't paid attention to, that we haven't bought into our house. Rastafari has been telling us about having a wholesome lifestyle, about eating healthy, about questioning religion and developing our spirituality. Rastafari has told us to respect Mother Nature and respect women generally. Rastafari has informed us and warned us about the current politics, or as Rasta would say, politics, and told us to be wary of the political system, especially one that does not serve our needs. Rastafari has given us music, music to feed our soul and to strengthen our mental health.
But our parents told us, don't bring no rasta in this house. Were they right? Were they wrong? I think they were just acting based upon what they knew at that time. Acting out of fear, as I mentioned, and also acting out of a colonial conditioning. My thing is though, that I think that we're in desperate times. We need to take a look at where we are as a group of people, as humanity. Now, as an example, there was a major concert in Jamaica recently. Um, a Jamaican artist by the name of Buju Banton had a concert where they said there were over 30,000 plus people in attendance. And what's significant about that is that he, uh, Buju, has always been one that has, or says that he has embraced the Rastafarian culture. However, he had gone to prison uh, 10 plus years ago um, under drug related charges. So he's out now and promoting Rastafari within his music once again. And it seems that, you know, that is something that the people want to hear. So it shows you there's a need that Rastafari can be prominent, maybe needs to be prominent within our lives. And despite what our parents told us, despite the warnings, don't bring no Rasta in this house. Listen, listen. Rastafari is knocking at your door. Are you ready? To let the love in. One love.